we're back. Okay, here's part two. I've actually, um, <laughs> I've been uh, outlining and kind of, um, you may not be able to tell, but I've kind of been working on my map up a little bit. This is the map that I generated in part one. This is for the Iliara campaign. Go back and watch part one if you haven't seen part one. But basically, we're going to use Kent David Kelly's adventure, uh, no, game world generator. And we're building up my Iliara campaign, which is a Tunnels and Trolls epic campaign um, that I'm doing. I've gotten really inspired by reading Hawk and more and um, doing all kinds of things with it. I have a feeling, I mean, I know it's November, so it's kind of like NaNoWriMo, but this is like um, the National uh, Fantasy Campaign Workshop <laughs> Month or something or you know who knows maybe i can make a game world that i start uh setting some stories into it's always been a dream of mine and uh you know it's kind of funny about bucket lists one of my bucket list things was to publish comic books and i started doing that so um it gives me a lot of confidence that i can do the same thing with uh maybe writing or at the very least put, doing this very fun campaign world and i'm gonna make regardless i'm gonna make this epic map i've uh, I built this during the last stream that you saw. All right, let's get into it. All right, well, first off, if you're not familiar, um, Kent David Kelly is this dude who has uh, built all kinds of really interesting um, design books uh, that are inspired very much by Appendix A and the um, first edition AD&D um, Dungeon Master's Guide and Appendix A was a generator for generating solo dungeons based on the work of a guy named, I think his name is Gary Lord, and I believe he even credited him somewhere down here. Um, and, uh, let's see. It's probably in there somewhere. But uh, yeah, Gary Lord was the guy who submitted those, those ideas originally to Gygax. And he called it Dungeon Solitaire. Uh, this is dun there's four of them, by the way. There's this is a guide four. I have all of them. <laughs> um, luckily enough, you know, um, they they appear in bundles from time to time. So I've gotten like I think two bundles from Mr. Kelly, um, and I'm a huge fan of his. But the thing that I'm working on right now is this. This is the I don't know if you can see it. This is the, uh, whoops, what are we on, page 47? This is the game world generator. And if you look down at my map down here, and hopefully it's uh, recording, let me just check really quick. Um, you can see that I have a map. Okay, now I've gotten to this point where I think if I roughed out the civilized regions, I've done that. Um, let me take a look at what this is. I'm, I've, I've, I've forgotten what this is. Here is an example of my Northwestern Sector's RSS. What is RSS? Wilderness Classification. I don't think I'm there yet. I think I'm over here. I'm out. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember where I was. I'm at the Regional Summary Sheet. And I've already filled in Wild Civilized for everything here. Let me get the old notebook out. We're doing this kind of the old-fashioned way. I have terrain listed for each one of these things. And I've just got to figure out... Let me get my pencil. There's sharpened. What does he need you to do? You make the wilderness or civilized code, which I've done for each one of my regions. And if you look down at my regions, you can see uh, like each region has a, um, a number, right? And then you then want to include some interesting isolated kingdoms surrounded by wilderness, a few bottleneck areas. I've already figured that all out. He says, I've designated mountainous areas as terrain mountains, but I've not yet determined a predominant area of other terrains. Oh, okay, so each one has a predominant terrain. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look um, at what we got. Mine starts up here. It is mostly mountains and forest. Now, I wonder if he, um, does he mean it's all mountains? And which ones are islands? 
So there's some islands down here as well. We'll call those islands. I'm going to say that this one has... Okay, predominant terrain. This is what we're trying to figure out. You can just give each wilderness region on the map a code as follows. Um, and you can just make all kinds of stuff. Desert, poisonous land, salt flats, you know, whatever you want. Um, <laughs> it just means that around 50% of that region's terrain is of that single terrain. Give each region a single predominant terrain type. I was wondering if you had to do all of them. Okay, so now we can figure this out. So, starting with one, uh, it's actually mostly forest. So... Number two, mostly swamp. Number three, forest. Number four, where is number four? Four is up here. It's this region that goes over to here. It's about half swamp, half plains. I'm going to call this one plains. Now it's in the cold the subtropical, so it's, it's, yeah, it's cold plains. Five. Oh, it's kind of a split. I've got a couple of mountains down here. I got a forest. Um, oh, it's swamp. Easy enough. Or marsh. Six is uh, mostly hills. Seven, desert. Desert and mountains. Now, I'm putting them both in here, even though he said not to do that, because I don't really know what it's for yet. This one's definitely desert. That's the high desert. That's like the tundra. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. He doesn't have it on his list here. He says wasteland. Which he includes desert under. Okay. Maybe I should call that wasteland from now on. Nine is forest. For sure. Ten. Is... It's mostly mountains. 11 is mostly forest. 12, I'm going to call that plains. 13, forest and plains. 14, 14 is this whole region here. It's got some hills, but I think it's mostly plains. 15, mountains for sure. Sixteen mountains. Seventeen. Seventeen down here is definitely forest. Eighteen. It's this tiny kingdom in its plains. 19, surrounded on all sides, by the way. Where would we put 19? 19 is up here. And it looks like it's mostly plains, actually. 20. That's kind of dominated by a lake, but it's actually forest. 21. Where did I put 21? 21's up here, forest. I got a lot of forests in this world. Definitely forest. 23. 23 is this kind of sliver of land up here. It's mostly plains. 24, it's the fertile plain, by the way. It's right alongside of the, uh, of the bay. 24, right over here. It's actually this sliver here. No, it's, it includes this area here. It's swamp. Or marsh. I'm going to put marsh instead of swamp this time. 25, swamp. Or marshlands. 26. Swamp. 27. Swamp. 28, 
it's almost all forest and it's a little secluded area. It might be our elven kingdom right there. 29 is forest. 30. 30 is forest and it's an island. But I'm going to put island. All right. I've got about seven more, so 31 islands. 32. I think 32 is islands. 33. What did I do with 33? It's, it's probably another island. No, 33 is islands. It's up here. 34. It's the islands. That's islands again. 35. It's a larger island, but I'm going to call this a swamp. And then put islands as well. It's a larger... It's like a larger... These are meant to be continents. It's 24 miles, so it's, you know... It's, it's larger. 36. Where are you at? 35. Where would we put you? 36. Oh, right here. Swamp and 37. So it's islands and islands. Th 36 is just islands. 37, we're going to put islands, but it's really forest. So I'll put forest islands. Okay. No problem. Now it says... You should try... Okay. The borders of your regions uh, are between the significant terrain types. Okay. <laughs> By definition, you should never be placing the same type of wilderness in two adjacent regions. Well, I don't think I did that. All right, let's, let's continue moving on. Oh, I get it. Okay, so here's where it has realm type as island, but it's still got the dominant um, terrain. So all the ones that say islands, that should be in the realm type, and we're going to put it back here. And it may be that we have to redo some of this, but that's okay. We're following it to the best we, uh, of our ability, and I will write Mr. Kelly an email if I'm overly confused. So we're going to put islands over here. Where else is islands? I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't see anything else. All right, so there we go. Now, what is this realm type thing? Oh, look, he's already figured out which one is which. Okay, I figured that out too. He put a dwarven kingdom in the civilized mountains here. And I want to do something similar, but I'm going to put my dwarven. I'm going to put my elven kingdom in 28. So that's our elven kingdom. And then uh, I thought 22 would be really good for our. I don't know our savage. <laughs> Uh, forest. Uruk kingdom. Uh, do the orcs live in the forest? You know what, we're going to call that a different, we're going to call that a, uh, let's just leave it for right now. Let's just leave that for right now. Now my world is going to have dwarves in it, but I don't like either of the dwarves in Tunnels and Trolls. They basically have two kinds. One of the kind is uh, a divine form of dwarf that was hewn from stone and they, you know, they emerge fully grown and they're they're magical creatures. So we're not going to use those dwarves. Those are the Gristlegrim dwarves. And then they have the Midgard dwarves that literally come from Asgard. So I'm not going to use those dwarves either. I think I'm going to use a Tolkien style dwarf. Um, and I think I would like to place them in 16. Um, which is going to be our, our Dwarven Kingdom. Because it is civilized. Alright. Give each of those sectors a unique thing. Start thinking about terrain types. 
if we did all this oh okay ah okay we got it so this is one of the things he does in the adventure guide too and it's really kind of cool he goes through and like it's not just forest you have boreal forests and timberland and coniferous forest and the hills might have ice caps or slag hills for mining or or whatever so you have all these other subtypes my problem is how do i figure out this realm thing this realm bit right here is that what we're is that what we're up to right now start thinking about the terrain types common subtypes and he's got hundreds of examples of these by the way so let's kind of scroll down a little bit yeah temperate plains is bushland hinterlands lowlands you know this so it's like and it's divided by these temperature regions which i don't know if you can see on my map this band across is the cold region this is subtrop subarctic this is our temperate zone, the largest area. And then down from this point down is subtropical. Now there could be a tropical region even further south that nobody's explored to yet. It's like the new world. Um, but that's what we got going on right now. Okay. Classify and or name some of your wilderness regions. Uh, if you like, you can add some time to name and or subcla subclassify some of the more reachable wilderness areas. Uh, be creative. Names... Um, they can be simple like the Wilderlands or the Outlands or oblique like Lands of the Boer Nomads or the Waste of the Azor Ice or Foreboding. <laughs> Here only death resides. Um, you can play the name game section of this supplement for more naming ideas. Okay, cool. Barbarian Lands. Nomad Lands. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I see what we're doing here. And then, okay, I see what he's done. He's kind of figured out some of this stuff here in this realms area. I tried to have the wilds predominate with a few wastes and some nomads and barbarians for interest. Okay. Are we deciding who lives there? I mean, is, is that what the point is? Or, so I, I should, I, maybe I should write him an email or something. Do we put these names on the map? Like, you know, when you look at the map and you see the, uh, you know, Greyhawk, you know, Near Div, <laughs> uh, the Grand Duchy of Jeff, you know, like, how do we do that? Okay. Forest A will not be Forest B. You can start making these distinctions, recording them if you like on your region summary sheet. This is the region summary sheet. So it is the realm type deal. And yeah, we're going to start having to do stuff like that so okay or Blackmore or Greyhawk so do I go through and do the whole list that's the next question let's take a look at his example one more time which is a little bit further down it's like he had barbarians and nomads kind of mapped out on there on his Okay. Classify and or name some of your wilderness regions. If you like, you can also take some time to name and or subclassify some of the more reachable wilderness areas. Um, okay, and we give them names, and I think we give them names on the map, or we give them names. I can I included an extra line on each one of my entries, so I can put it in there. I eventually want to do this map like I'm going to do it like in with ink calligraphy Dar you know darlene pakul style <laughs> all right so here's what he does he has some that are just called the wilds and the waste and he's got some areas where barbarians rule like that's what i wanted on 22. savage humanoids it's a choice bit of land um 23 well it's just gonna have to be like I, I gotta put cities in and stuff like that um if i put islands he puts them in parentheses for some reason um 16 is gonna be our dwarven kingdom did we already yeah we already matched that okay so i have the same instincts every time that's a good sign all right 
Where do we put barbarians? Where would you put the barbarians? I think we should put the barbarians in the cold regions. And like for example, seven. Um what is this region? Is this part of six? Or it's it's a different region. Oh, look at that. You know what? I've got a, re a missing region because I don't think this has a number. It's not part of six for sure. So that becomes um, region 38. And it is... We're going to put wild, right? Okay, yeah, it looks like everything's still going. I, I kept worrying that my webcam had shut itself off or something. All right, so here's here's the deal. There's the map. This is my RSS, or regional summary sheet, as it were. And what I'm supposed to do is figure out um, the realm type for each one of these. And it's, it is giving me a bit of a conniption. I think there's, you know, for a lot of these, the forest... Um, like, looking at his example, that's kind of where he's putting, like, civilizations in. And I want to, I think I want to look a little bit further down in the procedure. So, rough out the civilized regions is the next bit. Um, and he says, uh, now that your world's wilderness has been fully roughed out, haha, no, mine hasn't, it's time to give you the same treatment for the civilized regions or realms of your Malu. Uh, so, I, here's my civilized realms, and I've got a couple... So I think what I'm trying to figure out is, is it a waste or is it a wild? Like, I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm looking at this thing here. Wastes are regions which are vast and exceedingly dangerous, ruled only by beasts and monsters. Wastes typically feature rough terrain, terrible weather. Unlike wilds, they may be near civilized regions, but the regions are unclaimed. is because the resources are impossible to cultivate. Nobody wants them. Oh, okay, no problem. We can figure some of that stuff out. So let's take a look, starting at the very beginning of one, which I believe is this island up here. Uh, it's definitely a wild. And it's, we're talking about the islands up here in the corner. Um, two is a wild, three is a wild. That's because they're on these unclaimed islands. Four. Where's four? Oh, four is up here. That's a waste right there. Um, it's too cold. It's like cold plains. So, well, is it? Deserts of ash, icy flats. Ah, maybe that's a wild. It's not civilized. Uh, five is civilized, so we skip it. Six is civilized, so we skip it. Seven is wild. And we're going to call that one... Desert Mountains. We're going to call that a waste. That has the desert bit in there of the tundra. Eight is also a waste. It's mostly tundra. And then we skip all the way down to number 15, which is over here. This is our Dwarven Kingdom. It's not wild, it's civilized. Okay. Or 15 and 16. So what's the difference? 16 is up here. 15, they're, uh, you know what, they're both, they're both Dwarven Kingdoms, so let's put them both down. Let's say that there's two Dwarven Kingdoms. In the world of Earth Dawn, which was put out by FASA back in the 90s, that was, like, most of the game world that they had developed there was, like, dominated by Dwarves, even though, or they were the main civilizing force, um, even though, you know, like all fantasy role-playing games, hum it's a human-centric game. Um, 17, they just, I guess the posit is that um, dwarves were just more civilized and advanced than all the others. Um, okay, 17. I've lost track of where I am. 15, 16. It's not up here. 19, 17, it's down here. And for 17, they have it as a forest. I'm going to definitely say that that's a wild. There looks like some great areas that could be settled. 18 is civilized, 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 all the way down to 24. Which is a waste. It's got a marsh dominating it, and it's really difficult to get to. 25, same deal. 
26, same deal. 27, same deal. 29. Where's 29? 29. This is a wild. There's a lot of good stuff over there. Forest. I'm going to write civilized on 28 here. Now, suffice to say, I don't really 100% know what I'm doing. I'm following this procedure and I'm doing okay. But, um, you know, it's, it's not easy. This is definitely a wild for 35. And 37 is a wild as well. 30, oh, no, 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 no. 37 is that new region that we just discovered. No, that's 38. 37 is this one right here. That's 37. It looks like I'm writing 32, but that's 37. And that's a, a wild. Okay, what is the next step? All the civilized ones are open. I'm looking at the uh, example over here. Okay, rough out the civilized regions. Okay, it's time to give the civilized regions a deal. A typical old-school fantasy world will consist of a chaotic plenitude of kingdoms, duchies, splinter states, invading empires, collapsing marches, and barbarian horde lands. This is not only in keeping with pulp fantasy tradition, it's also a fair reflection of the European Dark Ages and the medieval period taken as a whole. Although, we're not trying to be medieval, as much as I like that period. Um, so let's, let's take a look. Uh, okay, he's giving us examples here of suggested cultural themes for realms. And his, his suggestions, let me show, show you this bit because it's actually kind of cool. Okay, take a look. This is how we're going to be messing around with our, our civilized areas. Now, do I have this, this whole page is wild. So there's no stabilized areas. But I have this cluster of kingdoms, and they all kind of surround this central uh, inland sea. And with the exception of the two dwarven kingdoms, I'm putting at 15 and 16. And I am going to put... Um, Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the uh, dividing line right there. Say so these are our two dwarven kingdoms. So maybe the two dwarven kingdoms are are there. But anyways, he has this idea like ancient Egyptian, ancient Mesopotamian, uh, ancient Phoenician, classical Africa. He's got uh, classical Carthaginian, which I like that idea with uh, republics and war elephants and heavy warships. Classical Asian, classical Greek. You got me. I'm right there. Like the Greek, the Greek civilization is one I want to do. I'm going to call the Machaeans. Um, let's, so let's go back to the, the very front of our list, and let's decide what each of these uh, civilized areas is and who civilized them. The first one is Area Five, and if you look at it, it's this kingdom right up here. It's in the subarctic region, so it's cold. Uh, I don't think it could be, could be Classical Greek. I think I want to put the Greeks uh, a little bit further south. They have Classic Mediterranean, Classic Persian, hmm, Roman. These are the ancients. I want to get a little bit fur further afield. They have Folkloric English, which is Arthurian, and then they have Folkloric German. Oh, I like both of those. So, Fairy Tale Kingdom... Oh, they have folkloric French as well. That kind of, might be fun. What else? Let's do before we lose it. All right. I like the idea of folkloric German being five. So. And I'll have to come out with a kingdom name for what that is. Then that number six is also right there. And I think I want to do something similar. They have Lost World. Oh, this is so cool. Ah, Medieval. Medieval Indian, Medieval Irish. What's What would be cold? 
medieval Russian, <laughs> which is like our Baba Yaga, Koshe the Deathless, Liches, Firebirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Medieval Russian. I am down. All right, let's take a look at region number nine. Over here, far to the east. It is in the subarctic region where it's getting cold. Um, there's no reason why we can't do the same region twice over and have like Russian and another Russian, just like we're having dwarves and more dwarves. Um, but uh, I might do medieval Scottish. I'm going to put Scottish slash Celt, Celtic, etc. Number 10 is a uh, civilized mountains. This is a, a kingdom down here. Uh, it's still kind of cold, but I think we're cool. I think we might do, um, ah, dark age finish or medieval Swiss. I like that one. Medieval Swiss. Yeah. And you know, it's not, we're not actually going to put the Swiss there. We're going to generate, we're going to create a new culture. And we're going to style it after that, is what we're going to do for each one of these. So the next one, 11, a civilized forest, and 11 is down here. And here's our um, medieval England right here. Or our second medieval England. Is there a folkloric England as well? I think we did. There is. That's the other one that I chose, right? 12, the Civilized Plains, that's this, this is going to be the starting kingdom, it's the biggest one, there's a big swamp here in this one area, mostly plains, I think that one's going to be, um, oh look, they have Renaissance Transylvanian, Renaissance Italian, I think these are all cool ideas, I'm going to call this one, um, How about folk fairy tale folkloric English again? Folkloric English. Those are our Arthurians. All right, number 13 is Civilized Forest. Where's number 13? 11, 12, 13. Oh, this is this pivotal state right here in the back. And I have it as civilized. It's mostly forest. We can do something weird with this one. They're in the temperate zone. Um, let's do something wild with this guy. Uh, we have lost world prehistoric. It's not isolated enough to make it prehistoric, although it is kind of a cool idea. Um, but, uh, or they have medieval Arabia, medieval French. I like the medieval French. Let's do that one. The medieval French is paladins, churches, cathedrals, relics, gargoyles. It sounds awesome. And this gives us like clues about who we're going to name people after, you know, how we're going to develop the costumes, the, you know, all the, the cultures, all that other stuff. All right, I got more. 18. 18 is, if you look at my map, 18. Oh, this is our hidden kingdom. This is something we can do something weird with. It's, it is plains and it's civilized, but we could give it something, uh, something special, something different. I could give it a folkloric French. I like the idea. It's Peralt, Sun King, Fairy Queen. This is that'll be our uh, our fairy area. Where is it? Eighteen. I'm looking at it again. Yeah, yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen is an isolated plains area. Um, I'm going to call that one. Dark 
Dark Age. Let's do it, give it one of the Dark Age ones. Let's get Classical Roman right there. Roman, and then 20. Where's area 20? Twenty, I like it. So that's going to be our mythic Greece or uh, classical Greek. Yeah. And then twenty-one is civilized as well. So that's our other kind of interesting kingdom. I think we're going to make that one. I really like the idea of. Uh... We'll do something ancient with it. No, I think it's. I think that we're gonna we have to throw the ancient ones a little bit further out, like undiscovered areas. Let's put classic Carthaginian. Their their um, examples used are like it's got a republic. They've got war elephants. They worship Baal. They have heavy warships, ruling queens. Classical Carthaginian. And our last one is 23. Um, there's 22, 23. It's this kind of the sliver of land down here. We could do something interesting with that. Let's go a little bit exotic this time. We could do Persian. Let's do classical Persian, right? God, King, Immortal Warriors, sounds good. All right. Now, did we hit them all? Hit them up, hit them up. We did it. We did this page, this page, this page. All right, we're good. We're good. All right, let's move along. We've got our... We've got our civilization sort of mapped out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to like commit to it, but we'll figure it out. Um, let's take a look. I'm scrolling down. Lovely art. I, I, I'm only sad that I didn't I wasn't able to work in Renaissance Transylvanian with like vampires, wolves, and gypsies and stuff. Um, okay. Realm themes. Beyond these ideas, other popular and more exotic realm themes could be african australian aztec chinese eskimo hyperborean or hyborian incan japanese lovecraftian north american indian or polynesian like if you look at the otro uh Otro clans and um the old basic D, &D those were based on american indians and they had um i've seen every one of these at, at some point okay let's see as you decide on a theme, you may want to put a note on the map or on your region summary sheet. Okay, I did. It says don't fill in everything. I got an extra line. I'm good. Okay. Your campaign map should be large enough to handle everything if that's what you want to do. Um, you can create your own fantastic cultures, you know, right from scratch. We're not going to do that. We want to, we want to, I like using the real world mythology. Like there should be like, you know, a priest of Thor and uh, the church of Zeus. <laughs> You know, and uh, and then maybe there's like a, I I have this dragon cult that I made up, so that's already a part of it too. Okay, choose the one sector that you find the most interesting, and I think it's one of these. It's either twenty one or twelve. I think it's probably twelve. Twenty one or twelve, and those are let's see what that is. Twenty one is classical Carthaginian. Twelve is. Folkloric in the norm. Let's do 12. Let's do 12. All right, we're going we're gonna to turn the page. And it's got to be close to a river. It is. It's close to a, uh, the inland sea. It's like boring right on it. Um, thinking about that starting here, we're gonna getting much closer to playtime in the first adventure. Uh, oh, man. I, you're rushing me. <laughs> Um, set all of your world maps and notes aside. These bare sketches will be developed later on. Your world sketch is ready. Really? Okay, now we got to develop each realm. Okay, oh, there's 30 questions to when the game begins. They've listed all 30 questions. So let's go over them. 
So each character, you have to decide what and where is our homeland. And we now have a list, right? We can even choose what is our homeland's climate. We have a list. We can figure that out. What is our homeland's predominant terrain? What other terrain types are nearby? Who is our homeland's ruler? I can figure that out. What is our homeland's culture? I have a list. Uh, homeland's predominant alignment. Well, Tunnels and Trolls doesn't use alignment, but I think we can basically... Um, I was thinking of kind of cobbling on the uh, general good, evil, law, and chaos. I think this is called the five-point alignment system. You're probably familiar with law, chaos, and neutrality, which is the OD and D, basic D and D kind. And then AD and D introduced the nine system, which is lawful good, lawful neutral, neutral good, <laughs> chaotic good. You know, uh, no, it's lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good. True neutral, lawful neutral, chaotic neutral, chaotic good, um, no, neutral evil, lawful evil, chaotic evil, right? So that's the nine point. The five point is a little bit simpler. So it has chaos and law, and it has neutrality, and it has good and evil. And you don't mix and match. You just say this, which one of the five you're more or less aligned with. Maybe you could draw a little star and say I'm, I'm more or less down with that. So we might add that to our Tunnels and Trolls campaign. It's a, this is where we're getting to the, you know, to the point of homebrew. What did that? What did I just do? I don't know. All right, well, anyways. Let's go. All right, it went away. Um, then it's, we start asking about, um, are we, with our alignments, accepted, distrusted, or hated? You want to know your position in society? Um, where And, and I, I ran into this when I started fooling around with adding the extra characters. I added my two... Um, Miscreants, my ne'er do wells, the poachers, right? Um, what demi humans live nearby? So we want to know which races you can choose for your characters. Are they friendly? What humanoids live nearby? Are they actively hostile? Will they invade? Are there dragons known to live here? That's an important question. Uh, what types of monsters are common in each territory? And we've got that kind of figured out with the cultures as well. Um, what town do we meet in? How big is the town? What's the nearest dungeon? How far away is the dungeon? Are there any other dungeons we know about? Is there a mega dungeon? That's got to be the core of the campaign. I think it's really important. Um, resources and treasures are most easily found. Where's the nearest city? How important is it? How big is it? How far away is the sea? Where do the rivers lead? Where are the borderlands? What's beyond the borders? Okay. Now, did they go and they decide, define each question? I wonder. I'm wondering. Graph paper would be a different challenge. It's not ideal. Blank paper would be... It's either very easy or very difficult, depending on how your mind works. <laughs> so, I happen to know, or I think I know, I think I've seen pictures of the Blackmore um, maps, and they're just done on blank paper. They're just hand-drawn. Um, calculating the scale. And we've got to the point where we've chosen the scale as 24 miles, drawing the starting area map. Okay. We're getting into maps too. Let's call this the end of part two. And tomorrow we'll get into part three. We're going to draw a starting area map um, that we can um, we can use for this campaign. All right? Okay. Talk to you later.